This is from two days ago with Jason, Greg, and myself. Um, and we just started to work with our number ones, our primary cons. And we still have a whole bucket to process. But this is a this is a lot better than a lot better than the other day. So we're excited to keep going. We really want to know it's in the number one. Hey guys, this is Greg, aka Con Man. Uh, today we got some exciting news. We are finally going to be running some ore through our mill site. We have about 10 tons stockpiled and we're really excited about seeing what kind of gold we have in it. Uh, today is December 4th. All summer long we've been telling you that our mining season starts in October. Well, we had uh, a major setback in our mill site and for uh, what that is, I'm gonna let Harry explain that because uh, it's still a setback. We had to do some minor changes so that we could still run. So Harry, why don't you explain what took place? All right, so here's material that we wanna run. Um, we have a problem though. The main bearing on the eccentric shaft failed on our jaw crusher. So it's all pulled apart and we're trying to fix it. Without a jaw crusher and a mill site, we're pretty much dead in the water. So we thought of a good idea. We're gonna pre-classify the material before it goes to our system. And we load our material onto here, into the surge hopper like before, and then up to the mill. So what the issue is, we're gonna have this oversized material that we can't crush. Um, but since we're mining a dump from the root beer mine, this actually might be a good test for us to see if it's even worth running the oversized material. And then once we get the jaw crusher fixed, we can then take the larger stuff, run it through the system and see if it's worth running it together or running it separately. That's our update. So Con Man and I are gonna get rolling on this today and see if, yes, sir. See if we're gonna get $400 a ton. Let's spark up to the machines and get some gold there, brother. Yep, let's go to work. Yeah, we got Jason here at our mill site this morning. For some reason, uh, we keep running into each other. Yeah. So we're gonna show him our system and, and uh, go through the process and maybe he can see some things that we could do better. But I'm gonna go ahead and uh, light this system off. So we got here, this is, a, this is a phase converter. So what it does, it takes a single phase 240 and converts it into three phase 240. All right, this is our uh, frequency drive, three phase frequency drive 240. And we run the mill at about 2100 RPM per the manufacturer's recommendation uh, using a 10 horsepower motor. I've already got it dialed in, so all I gotta do is push the button and get going. Now while this thing spins up, I'm gonna go outside and turn the vacuum system on for the dust. Here's our vacuum system here. Get our water flow on. Float switch. Let me turn the table on now. table get settled come over here to our main belt we'll go ahead and start our little feed conveyor and then we'll walk back over to the mill make sure there's no excessive vibrations so I don't have to shut it down coming out like it should. Turn on the mill water. Check our RPM. Okay, so we're about 2100 RPM, so we're ready to roll. You ready, Con Man? Let's do this. All right. Let's go. My belt is straight. We had a problem with the belt walking a little bit, so we got to keep an eye on that.
sample of the number one concentrate and kind of see what's in there. I think I just heard a piece of steel go through the mill. Yeah. Alright, so here's the results from taking a little sample from the primary concentrates, the number ones. And uh, Jason took the time to take a little sample and this maybe was three or four minutes of the primary cons, the number one running off the table. So look how fine that stuff is. Ultra, ultra fine. I think what we're gonna do is take this, take our number one primary cons and run it through this really fine mesh screen Riverdance mini jig to help us remove the gold from magnetite and hematite and help us recover the gold a little faster than instead of trying to pan it all ourselves. And so I wanted to show you this, uh, when you're running a mine dump, especially if it's an older one that burned down, you know, if they had buildings, this is all the stuff that comes out of our classification of the material. So it's just junk. Now you don't want this going through the mill. You know, people go out there and they go shooting, they leave batteries, you know, this is the stuff we don't want to have go through our system, so we classify it off. But yeah, this is from one mine dump. Do me a favor, hit that little red button right there. Cool. All right, before Jason had to leave, we took a little bit of the primary concentrates. It's, this isn't all of it, but we just did a quick, quick little pan so he could he could see the final results. Um, what we'll do is we'll get all the cons cleaned up and put into a nice little little crevice of the pan there for everyone to see, and then we'll get a final weight and figure out if. The root beer mine is worth chasing or not. All right, we finished up for the day for our test run, and Jason's got to get out of here. But Jason helped out a lot with us in the system, kind of fine tuning a few things. And I uh, got a little color of gold before he went, and we'll get this thing processed up and get Jason some photos of, of the final product. Yeah, no, it went awesome. I think you guys have made a lot of improvements since I was here last. And I can see in the next six months, you're going to get this thing really fine-tuned and, and just running nice and smooth. So, oh, yeah. good work. Yeah, I look forward to my next trip down. Yep. Thanks, awesome. Jason. Yeah, thanks. All right, it's time to run the number twos across the table and make a super con. See if we can't get another line of gold like we did last time, huh, Greg? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Hollywood's here to inspect us today to make sure we're doing it right. Okay. How you doing today, Mr. Hollywood? Thumbs up. You missed out yesterday, but I think today's gonna be a, a good day. Sorry, got a day job. Yeah, I know, we all gotta do something for a living, you know? But Greg's running the table expertly. We're recirculating our water. We're in the mood for gold. <laughs> I got uh, Mr. Hollywood over here. He's putting the number twos into the, into the trough there and then trying to concentrate the number twos into a number one. How's it looking, Hollywood? Uh, good. We're seeing a nice little line. Right. Take a look. Right. Right there. Starting to get a definition of gold there. You can see the gold right there at the edge. Right there on the left side, we get a black sand and a little bit of blonde. And then we're cutting the line here, and then there's some ultra, ultra fine gold you can barely see going into the number two. So this is a good trick to reconcentrate the number twos into a uh, super cod. That'll make it easy for us to get the gold out. And keep in mind, 
This is uh, the secondary, the B's yeah. from yesterday's run. Yeah. So when we run the A's, we'll even have a better line on the table. Oh yeah. But this is a lot better to sluice if we get what we can back out of the other B's. So. And we'll test out that uh, that mini jig with our cons today. Testing the river dance mini jig out with our with our concentrate. We've gotten almost all the gold we can out by uh, panning. And so now we're going to use the river dance to mess with our um, our panned cons. And it should be super ultra fine gold. Gets to what appears to be a 50 mesh screen in there. And this jig will keep anything coarse in these two top trays here. While the fines go down into here to a super con of microscopic ultra fine gold that the table catches. I finished running and now it's finally cleaning itself out all the way and when the material stops flowing out of the machine I'll shut it off. I'll take the material out of the top and pan that. The ultra fines are down here and I did a test pan last night. The gold is so fine that it just goes right out of the pan in the water so uh, I gotta figure out what I'm gonna do with that. Okay, Harry, tell yes, us sir. what's going on. I just finished running our cons through this little mini jig, and I went through and panned out the um, the discharge of the minus 50 mesh that comes out of the bottom of this thing. Ultra fine gold. So this is this is what I couldn't get in the pan. So I made a super con. Um, I gotta assay that stuff. But this is awesome. This is the stuff I missed. It's not a lot of gold, but it, it, it's proof that, you know, maybe I just, instead of panning this stuff, we just run it through the machine and get the cons. Mr. Hollywood here was clever to tell me just to use a classifier to get the balls out. So now I'm gonna see what's, if I panned out any coarse nuggets, they're gonna be in here, any, any larger gold. But this stuff is pretty coarse. I mean, this is, all the fines are gone and now I'm left with coarse, chunky stuff. Okay, well, let's let you pan that down mm -hmm. and we'll show everybody what we find. All, All right. right, Harry, where we're at? Well, I just panned the stuff out of the top trays and I'm relieved to know that I'm not too bad of a panner after all. There's only two little specks of gold that made it through my pans. So those two guys got trapped in the top tray. So my conclusion with this machine is um, we can trust it now. So I think our next run will run our primary cons through this machine without panning and that'll cut our time down significantly we'll be more efficient not spending a couple hours cleaning up the cons on the table here so we'll just put it through the machine get the pan out of the bottom pan out the top and we're done i only have to do two pans with this machine with our primary cons whereas before i was doing like five so i'm excited this is what the machine caught so i trust it so what we're going to do this is what we've recovered all together. And so now Isn't that pretty. Yeah, now we're gonna we're gonna speed things up the next go around. Okay, looking forward to it. Yes, sir. Yeah, that's not bad. Greggy, you're gonna like this. What do you got? Like a fine-tuned machine, let's go. There he is. Here's all of our number twos from what? It's a what? Four, five thousand pounds? Uh, forty-seven hundred. Yeah, forty-seven hundred pounds. 
So yeah, our, our table is definitely a roughing table, but we'll, we'll clean it up. We just started this mess with the primary concentrates. This is from two days ago with Jason, Greg, and myself. Um, and we just started to work with our number ones, our primary cons, and we still have a whole buck at the process. But this is a this is a lot better than a lot better than the other day, so we're excited to keep going. We really want to know it's in the number one. We're gonna run all of our primary cons, number one cons, through this jig before we pan. And we did it backwards earlier where we had panned everything we could get out and then we ran it through the jig to see you know what it captured and we were satisfied so we will run our primary cons through the river dance jig and we'll catch it in a bucket you know just in case but i have a feeling it's going to get majority of our super fines that we always lose panning so very exciting all right gold's on the nitric to clean up before we melt these things into a little bead so while that's going, uh, I'm going to give you kind of a time stamp of where things are in time and space. We're still working on the jaw crusher. And I'm having to uh, drill and tap these little holes out so I can attach the battery back on with some new, uh, new screws I got. So uh, drilling and tapping is relatively easy when you're dealing with brass, but if you've ever sheared off one of the exhaust bolts on your on your car or you know a head stud or something like that trying to drill and tap those things out it's a nightmare so this isn't too bad i also want to show you a quick trick um if you ever get a like a, a screw stuck in something and it's not coming out say it's like a, a, a flathead or a phillips even when you're tapping if you get a pair of vice grips on your screwdriver or whatever and tap it the vibration will help you to uh to pull that thing out so that's a trick i learned on uh, shower drains on a ship you sit there and just tap on it and the vibrations kind of help knock it loose sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't all right last one Alrighty.